Saint Teresa of Jesus. Saint Teresa's devotion to Our Lady began at an early age after the loss of her mother at the age of 13. She says, In my affliction I went to an image of Our Lady and begged her with many tears to be a mother to me. It seems to me that although I did this in simplicity, it has been of much help for me, for I know that I have always found favor with this Sovereign Lady when I have committed myself to her and in the end, she has drawn me to herself. St. Teresa had a special understanding of the presence of Mary in the paschal mystery of her son, on the pain of her desolation and the joy in the Lord's resurrection. She loved to contemplate Mary's fortitude and her communion with Christ at the foot of the cross. On various occasions, it was given to her to contemplate the glorification of the Virgin on the Feast of Her Assumption. She was aware that the Virgin accompanied the community at prayer with her constant intercession, as happened at St. Joseph's in Avila and at the Incarnation. St. Teresa's Teaching on Mary the Holy Mother had a profound mystical experience of Mary and enjoyed her presence. Teresa also experienced the mysteries of Mary's life. Consequently, in Teresa's doctrine, there runs a deep conviction that the mysteries of the humanity of Christ and those of his Virgin Mother form part of the mystical experience of those tending toward perfection. Of the many virtues that St. Teresa proposed for imitation, there is one that contains all the others. Mary is the first Christian, the disciple of the Lord, the follower of Christ even to the foot of the cross. For Teresa, Mary is the model of total adherence to the humanity of Christ and of communion with Him in His mysteries in such a way that she is the model of a contemplation centered on the sacred humanity. The Marian Model Everything is Marian in the order, according to St. Teresa. The habit, the rule, and the houses. When she was appointed prioress of the Incarnation in 1571, she placed a statue of Mary in the first place in the choir, for she knew that the devotion, love, and respect of all the religious converged on Mary. In her writings, the name of the order is always coupled with that of the Virgin, who is the Lady, the Patron, and the Mother of the Order, and of each one of its members. In the Carmel Tradition In narrating the progress of the reform, Teresa always took care to stress its connection with the order, the service done for Our Lady, and the special protection provided by Mary on all occasions. Thus the Virgin appears active in every description that Teresa makes in her interior castle. It is Mary who intercedes for sinners when they commend themselves to her. She is the spouse of the songs, the model of perfect souls. She is also mother in that all her graces are summed up in her union with Christ in much suffering. Her book of the foundations also appears to have been written with the continual allusions to the Virgin and to her service. When she looks back at the end of the book, she remarks, We rejoice to have been able to render some service to Our Lady, Mother, and Patron. Little by little, things have been done for the honor and glory of this glorious Virgin and her Son. In fact, St. Teresa sees the Carmelite vocation as itself inspired by Mary. All of us who wear this holy habit of Carmel our call to prayer and contemplation. This call explains our origin. We are descendants of men who felt this call, of these holy fathers of Mount Carmel, 
who in such great solitude and contempt for the world sought this treasure, this precious pearl we are talking about. Even the separation of the Kaust from the Diskaust made by the chapter of Alcala in 1581 was seen by Teresa as part of the peacemaking work of the Mother of God. Our Lord has done an important work for the honor and glory of his glorious mother, for she is of the order as our lady and patron. <laughs>